This is a Saturday morning TV log from Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Welcome to another Saturday morning TV log, and this time around it's Back to the Future, brought to us by Universal Animation Studios and Amblin Entertainment. Hello again, welcome. I'm Dual, the Big D to you. This is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So this week's Saturday morning TV log is the animated series of the classic 80s film franchise, Back to the Future. It's an animated sci-fi comedy adventure television series based on the live-action trilogy. The show originally premiered on CBS in September of 1991. It ran for two seasons. And, well, it kind of takes place after the events of Back to the Future Part 3. Well, here's how the story starts out. Dr. Emmett Brown moved into a farm in Hill Valley with his wife Clara, plus sons Jules and Vern, and the family dog Einstein. As with the films, time travel was achieved through the use of a modified DeLorean, which had apparently been rebuilt after it was destroyed at the end of the trilogy. Now, of course, um, this came out after Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, which I happened to have been dropped from CBS the, from the previous season, but it was still going on, in, I believe, on the Fox Network or in syndication. But I haven't really talked about that yet. Now, where was I? The DeLorean now has voice-activated time circuits and can also travel instantaneously to different locations in space and time. In addition to folding into a suitcase, the characters are are well also travel through time using the steam engine time machine Doc invented at the end of the third film. Although Marty McFly is a main character and Jennifer Parker makes occasional appearances, the show focused primarily on the Brown family, whereas the films focus on the McFly family. The film's villain, Biff Tannen, also appeared frequently. In addition, relatives of the McFly, Brown, and Tannen families were plentiful in the past of or future parallel time zones visit. Unlike the films, which took place entirely in Hill Valley and the surrounding area, the series frequently took the characters to exotic locations. At the end of every episode, Doc Brown would appear to do an experiment, often related to the show's plot with his courtesy of his partner, who I'll talk about in just a bit. The first season also included post credit segments with Biff Tannen telling a joke related to the episode, alluding to Thomas F. Wilson's career as a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Who, of course, he, who, of course, that was the guy who played him in the movie. And actually, he once again voices him in in this. Now, only a couple of, care, couple of stars from here appear in, in their voices. Aside from Wilson, Mary Steenberg, who played Clara in Part 3, actually returned to do the voice of her in the animated series. Now, Doc Brown is voiced... Well, is actually voiced in the animated series by Dan Castellaneta, who was already starting to be big at the time as the voice of a certain Homer Simpson, and also lent his voice to other cartoons. However, at the beginning and end of each episode, there was a live action segment with the original portrayer of Doc Brown from the movies, Christopher Lloyd. <coughs> Marty McFly is voiced by David Kaufman. Who, of course, would later go on to voice Dexter on Freakazoid, Jimmy Olsen in Superman the Animated Series, and, and Danny Phantom. He's often considered to be a voice double for Michael J. Fox, who played M Marty McFly in the films. In which case, he actually voiced Stuart Little in the animated series of that, after the movies. Which, of course, Fox voiced the titular character. <laughs> Jennifer Parker is voiced by Kathy Cavadini. Well, I'm pretty sure I know that voice. 
She's well, she would later go on to be well known for voice in Blossom in the in the original Powerpuff Girls series, as well as the voice of Tanya Moskowitz in American Tale Five Goes West, which was actually released the same year this came this show came out. Of course, um, the following year would have its animated series in Five American Tales. Now, vocal effects for Einstein were done by Dane Man in the first season and Hal Rail in the second season. Jules Brown is voiced by Josh Keen, the eldest son, while, the, while his kid brother Vern is voiced by Troy Davidson. Now, another character that's on here, we do see the son of Biff Tannen in this, Biff Jr., who is voiced by Benji Gregory. For those of you who may, may know that name, that's the young fellow who played Brian Tanner on ALF. Now let's see here. Also, James Tolkien, who played Principal Strickland from the films, actually voiced an unnamed civil defense warden in one episode called Marty McFly PFC. But in addition, we get to see Doc Brown's, the fellow who played Doc Brown's lab assistant was none other than the guy we would later know as the science guy, Bill Nye. At, at the end of each episode, he performs scientific experiments related to the episode. Who all, Now, Nye also serves as the show's technical advisor. And these segments later led to Nye getting his own show after this came to an end. The, the show came to an end after 20 Six episodes were produced and aired for its two-season run in December of 1992. However, it did continue to get rerun until 93. Now, it's tough to find these. I think you can maybe find some episodes on YouTube, maybe. But you can probably find some elsewhere. Don't bother Chicken Peacock, though. They don't have it, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say it. Oh, yeah, and speaking of Bill Nye, look for a TV log on Bill Nye the Science Guy coming up next month for Super Sci-Fi September. Anyway, even after this, the show did return later on on the Fox Network for their Fox Kids block in the late 90s, and then again for a half a year from March to August 2003 on the Fox Box block before it became 4Kids TV. Now, Universal later released nine video cassettes and three laser disc volumes of the series from 93 to 94, chronicling 18 of the 26 episodes. In 2015, the complete series was released on DVD for the first time, both individually and as part of the Back to the Future Complete Adventures collection, which also includes the three films in the trilogy. When the film celebrated its 30th anniversary, yeah. In addition, the first episode from each season of the animated series are, also, are included as bonus materials in the Back to the Future 30th Anniversary Trilogy set. The following year, in 2006, Universal released an individual DVD release of the show's first season in June, and then four months later, the second season followed. The show went on to win four Daytime Emmys, first in 92 for Outstanding Film Sound and Mixing and Outstanding Film Sound and Editing. They won the same two the next year. Now, of course, um, also there's the theme Back in Time, which of course was done by Huey Lewis in the news in the movie. It's actually the show's theme song, but I think somebody else is doing it. And the ending theme is the Back to the Future theme song, of course, an instrumental version. Also, there would be a comic book series from Harvey Comics, a company that, of course, was well known for giving us Casper the Friendly Ghost and Richie Rich, detailed further adventures of the animated series. And two mini-series were published, and the first being a four-issue run, and the second a three-issue run. And a special issue was released, reprinting parts of the first mini-series first issue. Now, a few years ago, as part of the 35th anniversary of the first film, three six-inch scale action figures were produced by NECA, based on the animated series. There was Mari, Doc, and even 
well, along with Einstein and Biff. They were released as part of the Timmy Classics line and sold both online and at retail for about $13. Mari came packed with a hoverboard and guitar with strap. Doc Brown included Einstein with his digital stopwatch collar, remote control, an extra set of hands and goggles, and the, the Biff figure included an interchangeable head. Hmm, interesting. Anywho, I ha I've seen Back to the Future, the animated series, of course. I grew up watching CBS, because that's why I was usually on at the time. Well, although NBC was kind of competing against my viewing, after, well, before, just still, just a wee bit before, well, okay, I wasn't vaginal on NBC, well, completely all the time. So it was CBS that was mostly on, with ABC and Fox coming up behind, because I forgot NBC was coming downhill. This was, that would be their last season, they have animated series where they went to the uh, TNBC block. But enough said about that. But anywho, I wish you the best of luck in trying to find um, the complete animated series. So just try and look it up, and you should be able to find it. If you would like, I'll be more than happy to give you a better look at the characters. Now you see what the characters look like. There's Einstein, there's Mari, Doc, and Vern, Clara, and Jules. That's what our main group of characters look like. Here's a bit of a freeze frame with Biff and Mari. Anyway, I feel like Back to the Future, the animated series, is very good. If you like the movies, then I'd say you will feel right at home with the animated series. Now, I believe you can find the series for a pretty decent price and what have you on physical media, just in case you can't find it to stream anywhere. So, uh, let me make a last minute check. Now... The complete series might be a, a little pricey but on some sites, but some I think you can find for a reasonable price. But if not, no problem. They do, they do have, well, maybe not pricey on all sites. You may be able to find for a pretty reasonable price of maybe $20 or less tops. And same thing can be said for the solo releases of the first two seasons. You know. So anyway, Back to the Future, the animated series, I think you'll really like it if you give it a try. I know it only lasted two seasons. They were going to do a third season, but due to low ratings, it never happened. So anyway, that's going to do it for this Saturday morning TV log. What did you think of the Back to the Future animated series? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And we'll have another video coming up soon. So I do hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, consider checking out the Saturday morning TV logs I did for these other Universal properties. In the upper left-hand corner is the Saturday morning TV log I did on Fievel's American Tales. The upper right-hand corner is the episode I did on Beethoven, the animated series. Or if you would like a different kind of series that's not based on me, but was still from Universal, go to the bottom right hand corner and see the Saturday morning TV log on Exo Squad. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., as well as the Saturday morning TV log, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and next week's Saturday morning TV log is Super Friends, the legendary superpower show. So until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.